So we've been looking at some of the different classes in Baldur's Gate. And, and naturally, like pen and paper, tabletop, D&D, you're going to have your favorites. Um, whether you're just running through maybe Baldur's Gate 1 or Siege, or you're going to go through the whole saga on there, uh, we all tend to gravitate towards certain builds and play styles. And then there's kind of a second tier, so that's like tier 1. Then there's tier 2 of, of character classes that maybe you want to try it out, right? See what it is. You've got some ideas, you've got some some experience in terms of play. Maybe you want to roll with a monk and and see what this is. See if you can one-shot Quivering Palm with, with something. It's play around with some of the druid classes. Uh, they're very, very unique, open up a lot of tactics. But then there's tier 3 where just based on the nature of the game and combat and, and the mechanics, and it, do, it does a great job of capturing D&D, you know, from someone that plays tabletop, pen and paper, AD&D regularly, Baldur's Gate is pretty, pretty spot on, um, capturing the feeling on there. But of course, it's going to be a little bit limited in implementation. And, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I've sunk so many hours into these games. It's, it's insane. And I, I love every run through it. But certain classes just don't really they're a little bit bland and don't really work. And, and I, I'm not trying to, like, go against your favorite class, Wizard Slayer. I get it. On paper, it looks amazing, right? The, the narrative. Here's a, a fighter geared up um, to slaying wizards and just taking that vow. And, and you could get a dual wielder or, or some sort of, like, you know, fighter berserker on there cleaving up wizards. Especially when uh, there's a couple of interesting wizard fights in Baldur's Gate 1. But they're lower level. So eventually they're going to run out of spells and then you just tank them. But in Baldur's Gate 2 and, and Siege, there's some pretty potent wizards. You're going to run into these wizards. And to quote you know, Conan philosophy, only a wizard can kill a wizard on there. Unless you're a wizard slayer. But then you look and it's like, okay, um, your attack is essentially a fighter. But fighters... Yes, you have massive amounts of hit points, or, or warrior classes, you have massive amount of hit points, but fighter classes live and die literally based on the gear. And, and part of that is, is the gear. You, you want that powerful weapon. You want those stat boosts. You want that armor. You want some of those clicky consumables on there. You, you manipulating your gear. The Wizard Slayer, no gear. Very, very limited gear. Okay, well, you know what? There better be some cool abilities. Maybe some anti-spell abilities, or maybe some null zone abilities on there, or just um, the ability to deal with stuff. And, and what do you get? Some magic resistances? A couple of weak sauce bonuses? Um, stuff that's easily bypassed? Now, most of the other stuff in the game that's going to be going against you, um, mobs, dragons, massive undead, you know, the, the whole the whole A to Z of the monster manual. There's a lot in the game. Um, you're going to fall back not on your wizard slaying abilities, but on your, your stats and your hardcore fighter abilities. But you don't have the gear. And, and every time you find some gear, okay, you can use certain consumables and things. You're going to have lots of those because you're selling all the stuff you can't use. But you're going to bypass so much, so much um, in the game. And it's not even like, okay, look, um, Monk, right? I love playing Monks. I usually play a Dark Moon Monk on there. Monk gives up a lot of gear. There's some monk-specific gear, but at least I, I can say, okay, look, I'm giving up access to certain weapons, and I'm giving access to armor and a couple of other items on there, but uh, I'm gaining some spell-like abilities. If I'm Dark Moon, I'm gaining Quivering Palm. I'm giving um, the Frost Fist on there, or if I'm going Vanilla Monk on there, Stunning Fist is, is huge. Stunning Fist is, is huge, and the ability to leverage that in key fights. The trade-off even if you say it's not worth it, Fritz, you can at least agree with me. The trade-off is something on there. And I've, I've tried a couple of times to play Wizard Slayer, and I just I, I couldn't slog it through. I just, I just couldn't. Not implemented well. All right, well, Fritz, Druid Shapeshifter is just like that. No, that's just they didn't implement the code, you know, core, and, and it's not quite the equivalent of the type of werewolves that you fight out in the game, but that's at least a fun class. That's at least, I feel like I went through a portal, you know, I'm, I'm in Skyrim and I went through a portal and now I'm in D&D &D land. And I use the, um, 
the portrait of that guy who's all ripped up and jacked up on there, I can at least, it's a suboptimal class from a power gamer perspective, but it's fun and I can get into it and, and just go beast mode on and, and do all this crazy stuff. You know, you have a run through with that. It's interesting. It's a lot of fun. You're going to have fun. Wizard Slayer, I try to have fun. Okay, maybe you're getting heated and you're like, that's my favorite class and I always run through it there and I'll duel you on it and I'll take you out. Um, maybe, maybe, but I just I just struggle with it. And it's a shame because I, I think with some correct implementation, it could have been, it's hit or miss, but it really could have been a, a fun, fun class in the game. 